Today we're going to do something a little bit different because I am going to give you a presentation on vectors because we have been using vectors a couple of times inside the previous couple of lessons, but we haven't really talked about uh, taking vectors to the next level because there's some things that you just need to know when it comes to calculating vectors. Uh, and for example, the distance between vectors. So the first thing I want to talk a bit about is the two types of vectors we have inside our code when we do actually program C sharp. And this is something we know about because we have talked a bit about it in the past, just to kind of refresh it. Uh, we have two different types of vectors. We have vector two, which is the X and Y axis. And then we have vector three, which is the X, Y and Z axis. Basically, one is going to have the depth as an axis as well. And the other one is not going to. And typical examples where you use vector two would be in 2D games a lot of times because we don't need to get you know the depth in a 2D game. Um, but both vector two and vector three is occasionally used back and forward in 2D and 3D depending on what exactly we're trying to calculate. Essentially, if you don't need the depth when you're calculating something when it comes to the the vectors inside Unity, then you just use vector two. But let's say we have a game object inside our scene and we need to get the exact vector of that particular game object to know where it is inside our scene currently. Uh, the way we can do that is by simply going into our code, grabbing the player as a game object. And in this example, I want to grab the vector three of the player, which means that I'm going to be creating a vector three field inside my code, calling it player position equal to player dot transform dot position, which means that I'm basically grabbing the player. I'm getting the transform, which means that we can now get the scaling, we can get the position, we can get the rotation of the player. But specifically, I want to grab the position. So I'm saying dot position at the end there. And that is going to give me the X, Y and Z axis of my player inside my scene. If I want to get a more specific of the axes of the player, I can add an extension to it and say dot X at the end or dot Y or dot Z in order to get that particular axis of the player inside the position. So now that we know how to do that, let's talk a bit about the next thing, which is let's say I want to calculate the distance between two game objects inside my scene. In this example here, you can see that I have a player, which is game object number one, and I have enemy, which is game object number two. In order to get the distance between two different game objects inside your scene, you're going to calculate something called the magnitude. The magnitude is used to get the exact distance between two game objects, but we do also have something called squared magnitude, which is when we want to compare distances or proximities of game objects between one another. And this may sound a little bit confusing, but let me go ahead and explain within the next couple of examples why you might want to use magnitude or squared magnitude inside your code. Now, I am a very practical person, so I like to show how this actually makes sense when it comes to using Unity. So instead of just showing you a bunch of math and calculations and vectors, um, I would actually like to show you how it looks like inside the actual Unity software. So let's say we have our scene inside Unity. Something you may have noticed up until now is that Unity, when it comes to the scene, the midpoint, which is the center of the camera, when you start a new scene for the first time or create a new project for the first time, is going to be the zero point inside your scene. So if you take and create a game object and you reset the transform of it, it is going to be centered inside your scene. The reason it's going to be centered inside your scene is because it's going to have a zero x-axis y-axis and z-axis, which basically means that if we were to take the scene and transform it into a vector graph, then the zero point is going to be the middle of that graph, which would look something like this. So by visualizing the graph, we can now see that when we want to get positions of certain game objects inside our game, we're essentially just using an X, Y and Z position. And because we're visualizing it in this sort of way, we can now start talking a bit about how we want to calculate certain things when it comes to the distance between game objects inside our scene. So as an example, let's say I have two game objects. I have the player and I have an enemy. The player is going to be the blue circle, which is going to have an X of one and a Y of two. And the enemy has a X of six and a Y of five, which means that if we were to place them inside our scene and put that inside the inspector, you know, where we want to place them inside our scene, it would be position something like this. So let's say I want to get the distance between these two different objects. How do we do that? Well, we do that by calculating the magnitude. Now the magnitude can very easily just be calculated inside C sharp by simply getting the offset of these two game objects. And the way we would get the offset is simply by taking the X and Y position of the player and the X and Y position of the enemy and simply minus the two. And just to kind of like visualize what exactly this means, as you can see right now, our player has an X position of one and the enemy has an X position of six. So if we take from one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6. It would mean that we have an offset on the x-axis as 5. If we were to take the y-axis, which is 2 and 5, then it would be 2, 3, 4, 5, which means that we have 3. So we have 5 and 3 when it comes to the offset on the x and y axis between these two game objects here. This would also work, by the way, if we were to take and move the player to a negative position. So if we were to go below 0 and to the left side of the graph, then we would have, for example, negative 1, negative 2 as the x and y position. It would still work the same way. So instead, you would just say we start at negative 1 for the x axis, and then we would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We will give it an offset of 7. So, you know, it, it's still going to work even though you have a negative uh, position of the player or the enemy. So the way this would actually look like inside our code in order to calculate the offset is we would create a vector 3 offset which because we want to get, you know, the different axes, it would have to be a vector three or a vector two. And we just simply set it equal to player.transform.position, which is going to be minus enemy.transform.position. And that is going to give us the offset. The offset is something you're going to notice that we're going to calculate every single time we have to calculate anything when it comes to the magnitude or calculating the distances between certain objects or proximities, or something. Uh, so knowing how to get the offset by simply minusing the two vectors with each other is something that you need to know. So now because we have the offset, we can simply get the distance between these two game objects by getting the magnitude. So we create a float, we just call it something like precise length, and we set it equal to offset dot magnitude. And that's going to give us a rough magnitude of 5.83. The reason this is going to give us a rough estimate is because we would actually be getting something like 5.83 something, 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 something. Uh, but if we had to just, you know, kind of shorten it down to two decimal points, we would get 5.83. But now there's a tiny issue here because not in all cases when we want to calculate something about the distance between objects, we want to be using the dot magnitude built in method because the dot magnitude is a very expensive method to be using inside your code. So we don't always in all cases want to be using dot magnitude when we're trying to figure out, you know, which of two objects are closer to the player or if any objects are within a certain distance of the player then we wouldn't be using the dot magnitude because there's a better way to do things than simply getting the distance between the player and then two different game objects to see which of them is closest to you. And that is using something called squared magnitude. But before we get into the squared magnitude, let's talk about how dot magnitude, the built-in method, actually works when it comes to the math. And I promise you, if you consider yourself being not very good at math and you might have a hard time understanding what exactly is going on with the math that I'm about to show you. You don't need to know the math, you just need to know the point that I'm coming with at the end. Now, as you'll see inside the graph, we can actually kind of create a triangle between these two different game objects. And because we know the x distance, and because we know the y distance by using the offset, we can now calculate the third side of the triangle. And that is essentially what our dot magnitude built-in method is doing. It is using what is called Pythagoras theorem which is something you may have learned about math class back in high school. Uh, the teacher probably told you that you were going to use this one day and you said, nah, we're not going to use this one day. Uh, turns out you are going to be using this one day. <laughs> so by using this example with these two different game objects on the graph, let's go ahead and talk about Pythagorean theorem and why it is so expensive to be using dot magnitude inside your code. So in our example here, we calculated the offset, which means that we have a five on the x-axis and a three on the y-axis, which means that we actually have two sides of this triangle here. Then we can go into Pythagorean theorem, which says that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If we just plug in the numbers by saying that a is the x-axis and b is the y-axis, we get five squared plus three squared is equal to c squared. Then we simply square those two numbers, so we get 25 plus nine is equal to c squared. And then we simply add those two numbers together to get 34. Now on this last step here, if you know a little bit about math, in order to get rid of a squared, you can actually square root the number in order to get rid of it because they cancel each other out. So if we square root both sides, we're going to cancel out the c squared, so it's just going to turn into c. But it also means that we're going to have to square root 34 in order to get the length or the distance between these two game objects. And this is going to give us a c is equal to 5.83, which is the same number that we got on the previous slide in this little presentation I'm doing. Like this is the same thing as using precise length is equal to offset dot magnitude. Like it's, it's going to do this calculation here inside the method. So why are we talking about the math here? Well, we're talking about the math because as you can see in these steps of calculating uh, what c is equal to, we're doing a square root at the very end, 
the calculation. And square roots are very expensive when it comes to calculating things inside our code. So if we can do something here to kind of avoid that last step of doing that square root, that would be fantastic because it would be less expensive for us. Like I said, essentially what you need to do here is you need to ask yourself, do I need the specific distance between these two different game objects for something specific? If you do not, then it's better to use squared magnitude because it's not going to do that last square root, which is much more optimal inside your code. So to give you a couple of examples of when to use squared magnitude rather than magnitude, let's go ahead and go to example number one. Let's say I have two enemies inside my graph here, and I want to see which of these two enemies are closer to my player. In this case, here, instead of calculating the magnitude between player and enemy number one, and calculating the magnitude between player and enemy number two, by getting the offsets between both of them, and then using the dot magnitude, which essentially would run the Pythagorean theorem on both of these game objects, which at the end would say that enemy number one has a distance of 5.83 and enemy number two has a distance of 4.12, which means that enemy number two is closer to us because that number is smaller, right? But let's do something a little bit different. If I were to instead of dot magnitude use dot squared magnitude, we're essentially going to completely cancel out or not do the last step of this Pythagorean theorem, which means that we're going to stop when 34 is equal to c squared or 17 is equal to c squared. Like that's where we're going to stop. And you're going to notice something because even though we don't square root that number at the very end, we're still going to get one number that is smaller than the other. 17 is still smaller than 34, which means that it's still going to show us that enemy number two is a smaller distance away from us than enemy number one. To give a practical example, let's go ahead and say we have an if statement inside our code and I want to say offset enemy number one dot squared magnitude. Is that greater than offset enemy number two dot squared magnitude? Then do something. And that would essentially do something if the first enemy is closer to me than the second enemy. This basically means that we can still do things inside our code without calculating the exact distance. In example number two here, I have my player and I have one enemy inside the scene. And I just want to see if that particular enemy is within a certain distance of my player. We can also do a calculation without using dot magnitude in order to figure that out. So first of all, I want to get the offset again, like we do every single time, which is going to be 4.1 because I'm using the second enemy from the last example to do this little example here. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the squared length of these two different game objects by saying squared length is equal to offset dot squared magnitude, which again is going to give us 17 because we're not going to do the square root at the very end there. And then I want to create the distance that I want to check for if there's any enemies within that distance around me. And that is going to be length check is equal to three. So as you can see in my diagram here, I have the player, which is the blue circle. And I simply drew a gray circle around the player to illustrate three units of distance away from the player in all directions. So what I can do here now is I can actually go ahead and do an if statement. And I'm going to do squared length, which is the distance between the enemy and the player when we don't square root it. And then I'm going to check if that is lesser than or equal to length check times length check. And now you might be asking why are we doing length check times length check? Well, that is a good question. If we take a look at the Pythagorean theorem calculation here, you'll actually notice that 17 is actually equal to c squared, which means that we do need to take the length check and square that number in order to compare these two different numbers down here. So in order to compare a squared magnitude with some sort of number, we do need to square that number too. And again, if you know basic math inside math class, you'll know that in order to square a number, you just simply need to multiply with the same number. So we take length check, which is three times three, and then we have that squared in order to compare that to the squared length of the distance between the enemy and the player. And then again, using an if statement, we just simply check if the enemy is within that certain distance we're checking for. And if so, then we might want to do something inside our code. In this case, I just debugged that locked enemy is too close. And before we end the video, I just want to show you one other thing, which is that we can actually calculate the magnitude in another way as well than using dot magnitude. So if I go back to the slide where I showed you how to use the dot magnitude to calculate the distance between two different game objects, I can show you that we also have something called dot distance. Now, the way we do that is instead of doing float precise length equal to the offset dot magnitude, we can actually skip the offset art where we create a separate variable with the offset in it and simply go in and say float precise length is equal to vector three dot distance. And then we simply plug in the player's position for the first parameter. And then the second parameter is going to be the enemy's position. And that is going to give us the magnitude as well. 
So, you know, it's pretty much preference here. Do you want to get the offset first and then afterwards calculate the magnitude? Or if you don't prefer to separate the offset with the magnitude, then you can simply use this long equation down here to calculate it out. So with that said, I hope you understood a little bit about vectors and magnitudes and how to get the distances and compare and how to get the, the proximity of different objects. And I hope this was useful and I hope to see you in the next video.